92-year-old Ruth Adler Schnee is not only a pioneer in defining a modern look of architectural interiors, but also in redefining post-war America's sense of public space. Here, we showcase her successful career. Go outside and see the sunset and see the brilliant reds and blues and purples and look at the ocean or the lakes around here that change color from blue to green sometime and then bring it into your house and enjoy it. There's no such thing as making a mistake in color. Design is all around us. We've become so used to it, we often ignore it. Who made the patterns in the carpet at the airport? Decided the color of the curtain at the hospital that separates us from other patients? Who put shapes and colors on office chairs, the draperies, added texture and hue to office cubicles? It's in these spaces that the artistry and genius of Ruth Adler Schnee reveals itself. The Adler family fled to Detroit, having been victims of Hitler's Germany. In 1939, Ruth received tremendous encouragement from her art teachers at Cass High School and received a scholarship to the Rhode Island School of Design and a fellowship at Cranbrook Academy of Art. As we look back on the history of architecture and design in the 20th century, uh, one of the most important chapters of it is a movement that we call modernism, uh, which had its beginnings really uh, with the Bauhaus in Germany. It was founded in 1919 by an architect by the name of Walter Gropius, whose initial goal was to combine the crafts and the fine arts together. Among the instructors that Gropius brought with him to the Bauhaus was the Swiss painter Paul Klee. Paul Klee taught the preliminary course where young students would learn about color theory, materials, relationships, uh, today, he and his colleagues at the Bauhaus are amongst the most sought after artists of the 20th century. Uh, a Paul Clay, depending on the particular one, uh, may go at auction for three, five, seven million dollars. I was uh, 13, 12, 13, 14. Um, my parents were very active in the uh, artistic community in Dusseldorf and um, asked Paul Clay, who was a friend of my mother's through the Bauhaus, um, to come to the academy in Dusseldorf. And my dad found um, a, uh, who was active in real estate and financial advising, uh, found a house down the street from us for the clays to live in. And I have to give a little family joke here because the clays could not afford to pay him uh, the commission for finding uh, that house. And um, Paul Clay said to my dad, uh, you can have any of my paintings, just pick one. And my dad's famous words were, I cannot feed my children with your paintings. So, uh, much to my dismay, <laughs> uh, I don't have a, a clay. For a young woman that wanted to enter the fields of architecture and design, the odds certainly would have been stacked against her. However, one door that would have opened a little bit more easily would have been that of textile design. Ruth chose this path uh, and then immediately transformed it, creating some of the most memorable textiles of the 20th century. This is what I loved, and I really followed my dream. Um, actually, purest architects who want three shades of gray um, were very much against uh, my designs, but I loved the bold shapes and colors, and I just pursued that. If the Bauhaus was the center of modern architecture in Europe, Detroit was its birthplace in the United States. 
building on the legacy of Albert Kahn, Detroit in the period right after World War II saw the development of two of the most important architecture firms in the United States. Eros Arnen established his own firm in 1950, designing such buildings as the St. Louis Arch and the Dulles International Airport outside of our nation's capital. However, his first major project was for General Motors, designing the General Motors Technical Center here in Warren, Michigan. He brought many of his Cranbrook friends with him on the project, including Ruth Adler Schnee, whose textiles were incorporated into many of the spaces. Frank Lloyd Wright, um, and I worked with him on the Smith House, the Affleck House, and, um, and the, the house here that uh, is on Seven Mile and Parkside. Um, he did not like women, that was for sure. He, but he listened. And when I could explain exactly why I was recommending certain um, uh, um, layouts, uh, he listened. And I stressed always that the a client must have a word in it because they're going to live in this space. And um, so that, I think, helped in um, working with Wright. It, on the other hand, it did not work with Yamazaki. Yami was totally into his own ideas, and if and he did not want anyone interfering. The Yami that Ruth, of course, is referring to is Minoru Yamasaki, whose buildings here in Detroit include the Michigan Consolidated Gas Company, now known as One Woodward Avenue, uh, and many buildings for the Wayne State University campus, including the McGregor Conference Center. The, the problem I had with Yami was that he would not allow paintings to be hung. And I think it's so important for people to live with the art and paintings. We had many arguments. He's probably best known for the Twin Towers that he designed for New York City, the World Trade Center. Actually, uh, I specified the interior uh, finishing materials of the lobby. And then, of course, when I saw that plane drive into the building, I was totally hysterical. This corner 50 years ago was teeming with people. Hudson's department store, just down the street, had 33 levels and more than 2 million square feet of retail space. It was a major hub and destination for Detroiters. Just over my shoulder, Ruth Adler Snay and her husband, Edward Snay, opened their retail store. Adler Snay was the store for contemporary home furnishings and decorating ideas. All the while customers were upstairs, Ruth was in the basement creating her designs. The car center is located kitty corner from the former Adler Snay location on Harmony Park. After 38 years, it was our privilege to welcome Ruth back to the neighborhood. With months of preparation, we were able to mount the largest exhibition of this talented Detroiter's work ever. Hundreds of Snay designed textiles, graphics, and photographs spanned two floors and more than 6,000 square feet of exhibition space. What was truly remarkable about opening night were the number of people that came up to Ruth and said, I used to be a customer at Adler Snay. We loved it. Ruth has been a pioneer not only in defining the modern look of architectural interiors, but also in redefining post-war America's sense of public space. As a woman who broke through barriers in a male-dominated field, as a Detroiter who helped shape the international sensibility, her story speaks to the value of inclusiveness, to the entrepreneurial spirit, and to the profound role that arts play in nurturing our souls. I'm very grateful. I have been extremely lucky. I've been lucky to have had a background that um, prepared me for this. 
I have had a wonderful marriage, a wonderful partnership with my husband. And um, I just wish everybody had that kind of a life. It was difficult going through Nazi Germany because we were involved, we went through the Holocaust. My, I lost my entire family, but I'm very grateful I've had the experiences that I've had.